This freighter's jam-packed with Dong Feng hypersonic cruise missiles, Mach 7 capable. One strike could take out any of our aircraft carriers, including the Obama. The missiles will be delivered to these destroyers coated with carbon nanotubes, rendering them invisible to our satellites. That's why Harper had to get this footage the old-fashioned way. SDC planned to launch these missiles on Iran. That's right, boys. Iran. Now, I got enough problems. I don't need Persia being the SCC's bitch. Keppel Terminal's primary defense is a single Dong Feng missile located in the central hub. You will be equipped with HPM explosives, high-powered microwave bursts to scramble the missile's guidance system. The east and west perimeter is flanked by free electron lasers, supercharged beams able to take out any short-range missile. We need these down to take out the freighter. Your portable hacking modules will reprogram their targeting systems to fry them in their own juice. When their defenses are down, you call up the Kraken and we airstrike the freighter. Ten seconds out. Approaching insertion point. Get ropes. Prep to deploy. Here we go. All eagles out the door. Go, go, go! Hi everyone, Blazy Fire here, and welcome to Call of Duty Black Ops 2. This is our second Strike Force mission, and uh, it's simultaneously one of my favorite and one of my least favorite this, uh, these missions. Now that's mostly because the favorite part is actually because it's kind of fun. Uh, my least favorite part is because it's where you kind of feel all the wasted potential in the Strike Force mode. This, because of the way this objective system is set up in this map, where you have to go attack three different points, it would have been really cool if this was a Rainbow Six style you know, breach and clear kind of thing. Uh, but instead they went for this, which I, I don't really feel was really great. Mostly because your AI team cannot defend themselves. As you can see, my team is just barely surviving back there. And I have actually cut out big swaths of this mission that were kind of just me defending the point, or it being boring. So, just, you know, get ready to miss out on some really unimportant things. And right about there, uh, I've basically lost my entire team, but I'm picking up this Chai Com. I still have one guy left, but he doesn't last too much longer. He's in a bad spot. And with those devices I planted, we'll be switching over from this spot a second here, uh, but that device I planted over there was actually going to hack that thing so it's useless, as we discussed in the mission briefing. Now, you can see my team's roping in, and <laughs> they barely started shooting at this guy. And uh, you actually missed me going out and having to kill a sniper who killed an entire team back there. That's why I'm down to two guys here. But I do have ASDs now, which means that I have some sort of mobile backup, which is always helpful. And then I just got more four more guys to come in. Now the thing with the ASDs is that they're basically the hard counter for the claw units. You can also run people over in this mode with them. Uh, the problem is that their pathing is not great, and it does take them a while to get places. And in the next mission, where it's all drones or robots, uh, they become a major issue because they can't really find their way around the map. At one point, I almost lost the mission simply because of that fact. But over here is... Well, some guy's not looking in the right direction. But there's also a claw. And that's why I want those ASDs to stay alive. Also, it seems to me that I have some sort of flak jacket in these missions, because I survive a lot more explosions than I should. Not entirely sure. It doesn't tell you if there's a perk loadout associated with each uh, specific character type. And the ASDs can actually take two or three rockets before they die. So, with the second hacking device planted, we're more than halfway done, really. Uh, it's not too hard to defend this one. There's actually some pretty good spots right here. And you just wait. Of course, the way this game's AI works is the enemy AI is bunching up and my AI isn't moving at all. I'm actually completely unsupported despite the fact that I've asked my AI uh, staff to kind of move forward, which is not good news for me. Yeah, let's pop these guys. As you can see behind me, a group of them have kind of congregated. And the M8 uh, in single player or multiplayer is actually a burst fire weapon to start off with, uh, but in single player here, or in strike force I should say, it comes as a full auto. So I'm taking full advantage of that, though it is smarter to just fire short bursts. And I've picked up a small so I can try to take out that claw unit. I just have to go grab some more ammo from it. 
And as you can see, my team still isn't here. Not a good sign. And there's the ship we have to blow up. Uh, if you've played this in multiplayer mode, you know that the ship is not normally there. It's just kind of open to see. And I almost died in the death throes of the ASD. It started firing rockets and missiles everywhere. And I have a claw unit myself, uh, but that thing is not leaving the little spawn area. Now my ASD actually has left a little bit, and it's coming the long way over to me. I would have, I could have taken control and just guided it, but I've picked up a target finder LMG, so I'm pretty much invincible now. And the target finder is kind of like a better version of the dual band sight. It just, it puts a red reticle around all your enemies. And here I pick up an SMR, I believe and just start firing on that claw. It doesn't work out. And I'm trying to make a Hail Mary plant on this thing just so I don't have to deal with it anymore. Now the problem is that they don't have to come over and defuse that thing. They just have to shoot it. Which means if I do not protect that thing, I die. And right there you can actually see the streaks of light you get. Oops, I'm getting hit. You get these uh, contrails, basically. When, oop, dead. Whenever you have a sniper fire. And look at this, this ASD made it all the way up here, where it could have easily killed that claw unit, but why would it do that? And I'm actually down to only four people left here, which is a bad place to be. Now I'm trying to get them to move out of the spawn area, but it's not happening. But I cut that out too. Uh, they had, I had a bit of a fight to get here. And I actually have a hybrid sight on this weapon, which I have not shown off in the single player. But you can basically switch over between an ACOG and a red dot, and it's on red dot right now. But if you look in the bottom left where you'd normally be able to see if you could do that, there's uh, no button to switch. Because no one really thought this out. But we're almost done. This is a fairly easy mission overall. It just takes a while to fight through all the people, and the last mission is actually very much the same way, where if you can't fight through the people in the time you're, you're allotted, you're pretty much done. But I'm trying to move my units back. Notice that that claw unit still hasn't made it out of there. It's pretty much fine back there. And all I have to do now is wait for that to go off and hit a button, and we're done. Airstrike unit and here it comes. Weapon away. Yeah, it's not very difficult to do this. One less hostile ASD. I've n I should have tried to miss it on purpose to see what would happen, but I didn't really feel like doing this again, you know. Mission objectives achieved. Move to extract. But with that, we're essentially done here. It's like I said, not a hard mission. It just feels disappointing that it could have been a lot more than it was. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this brief video, and I will see you next time when we get back to actual missions. Hell of a job there, Mason.